Heavenly Father, as we are privileged to understand you are God who comes into our presence to enlighten our hearts and bless our minds and grant to us once again the goodness of your spirit. And so we ask that you would bless this time, enlighten our hearts, and keep us ever close to you as we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you please rise? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Jesus came riding on a donkey. He came as the conquering king. The people laid down their coats. They shouted, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Yet, when Jesus approached the city, he wept over Jerusalem. How he longed to care for them. But as a mother man cares for her kids. This is the day the Lord has made. Would you please turn to me to page 184 in the front of the hymnal and join me in the confession and absolution. Almighty God, our maker and redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O oh, most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit increase in us to knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. 
To those who believe in his name, he gives power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. The intro for this morning is Psalm 18, verses 19 through 29. We do read these verses responsibly. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O Lord, save us. O Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine upon us. You are my God, and I will give you thanks. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God the Father, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
The Old Testament reading for this morning is found in Zechariah, the ninth chapter, verses 9 through 12. It is so humbling to understand how connected God made the scriptures and how informed he granted his people of Israel of what the Messiah would be and what would be accomplished. In just so, in four short verses, he says so much about the wonder of the Messiah and the amazing effect that the grace of God has on his people. We begin with verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal, of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today, I declare that I will restore to you double. The epistle lesson is found in Philippians, the second chapter. It begins with verse 5. I love Paul because Paul just was given by the Spirit such a great understanding of the humanity and the godliness of our Lord and how the two fit together, and what he was willing to do so that we would be saved. And in this text, he once again speaks in such a bold way about the grace of our God. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Would you please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel for this morning is found um, printed in your bulletin. It is from the 11th chapter of Mark, verses 1 through 11. This is my time when I'm a radical, and I like Palm Sunday text on Palm Sunday, so you have to bear with me. We begin with verse 1. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Tell him, the Lord needs it and will send it back, back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at the doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. He looked around at everything. But since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Here ends the Holy Gospel. Would you please join me in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed at the back of the hymn? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may see it.
I do ask that the children please come to the front of the church. <coughs> Morning. Do you know what today is? Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. Do you know why it's called Palm Sunday? You don't? On Palm Sunday, the people grabbed palm branches and they put them on the floor. And they put them right in front of a donkey. Who was on the donkey? Jesus was. Everybody wanted to show they thought he was amazing. And back at that time, when they wanted to show that someone was really amazing, they would take what they had and lay it before the person so whatever they were riding could ride right over. And that's what they did. They went and found branches, all different kind of branches, but palm branches as well. Palms are always known for being green. What does green mean when a plant's green? It's good, it's not dying, it's alive. And so what they were showing was they knew their life was in the hands of of the one riding on a donkey whose name was Jesus. We don't cut palm branches and lay them on the road, do we? For me to show that I believe, I have been given this gift called speaking, and I can talk about Jesus. I've also been given a right to have what I cherish a lot, which is, ooh, this is going to be hard. Ah, my cross. This shows who do I believe in? Who died for us? And who rose for us? And so every time I touch my cross, what do I remember? Jesus. Do you remember Jesus? But we don't have to put palm branches down, do we? We just know how good he is. So let us pray. Dear God, help us to always remember who you are, what you have done, and your love for us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You're a really good big brother. I, I was informed last night that with my mic on my side, they can't hear, so you're going to be hearing today one way or the other.
Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The Father. The Father made the plan of the gospel. As I reiterate to my confirmation kids all the time, the gospel is always God the Father sending his son Jesus to earth as a man to go to the cross, spell his blood, pay the price, die, rise, and grant to us eternal life. This is the Father's plan. The Father dictated everything and chose everything about how that plan would go. He chose the exact time the Son would be born into the world. He chose the exact time that the Lord would start his ministry. He chose the exact time when the Lord would begin his final walk to the cross. And he chose each and every detail so that everyone would understand, but more importantly, we would receive exactly what he desired for us to receive, salvation. He left nothing to chance. When the Father in heaven asked his son to go to Jerusalem, Jerusalem was the city of palms, the city of peace, the place where God had chosen to dwell amongst his people in the temple where he had offered to them incredible gifts of grace, the festivals, which all pointed to actions of God for his people, and the Day of Atonement, which the Lord decreed was a day that all the people of Israel were cleansed of their sins. The grace of our God was in Jerusalem. In the actions of that the Lord granted the priest the right to carry out. When Jesus was approaching Jerusalem, he was coming as the greatest gift that the city would ever see. Every detail the Father desired. So the Lord went to his disciples and said, this is what I need you to do. I need you to go to the village opposite you. I need you to go, and you will find a donkey tied. When you get there, you untie it, and when you untie it, there are going to be people who say to you, what are you doing? And I want you to tell them exactly what I tell you to tell them. The master needs it. It will be returned. And so they did. The donkey just happened to be one on which no one had ever ridden. The foal. So that Zechariah would be fulfilled. The incredible detail that the father gave just for a donkey is overwhelming to me. Down to the littlest detail of a donkey, the Lord made sure that it was done in order for everything to go according to his plan. Now, I don't know how many of you have ever ridden donkeys. I have. Donkeys are stubborn. They put Germans to shame. But when the Lord got on this donkey, it did exactly what it was supposed to do. It carried a Savior. When the Lord was riding the donkey, people started to shout out as the gospel lesson explained to us. Hosanna, the son of David. They were all excited. They were proclaiming before him and after him, and there was these group of people just making it very clear. Jesus was someone very special. The Pharisees said, shut them up. 
And the Lord said, if they are quiet, the rocks will be speaking. This rock, it, it's not special. I've been waiting all night for it to say something. Hasn't said a word. This one, completely different kind of rock. Same result. This one would be good to toss at you. But it hasn't spoken either. Small details. We are rocks. Every one of us. Until the Lord grants us this gift of faith, understanding, humility, and the knowledge of our Savior, we are silent. It is only when he grants to us the right to believe that we proclaim and speak out and are heard and share the wonder of the message of life in God. We become living stones, the very stones in which he uses to build his church. We are not special. We are kind of like these rocks. I don't think any of you are going to get excited if I give you this rock this morning. It is not a special rock. I did wash it. But it's not a special rock. It's just a rock. But I would have loved for the Lord to say, okay, and shut up all of the people, and then the rock started to sing. It would have been awesome to hear a bunch of rocks sing. And so I asked him this morning to make these sing. And you see what kind of power I have. But he has made me sing. He has made you sing. Being a living rock is a remarkable understanding. Being the church of God and that each of us put together is called the body of Christ, and we build the most remarkable gift for this world. Palm Sunday was a time when God the Father chose for his son to walk a path that would lead to the cross. He came as the king of Israel, but when he came as the king of Israel, he didn't ride a stallion. He didn't have high dignitaries walk with him. He didn't have a special parade granted for him on his behalf. He did not go through the main gates. He rode a donkey. He rode a donkey through that sheep gate because he was not there to bring praise to himself, honor to himself, or recognition to himself. He came to be a sacrificial lamb to honor the Father's plan. So he rode a donkey. Nothing special about a donkey. But he rode this donkey in order to do a remarkably simple thing. He came into the city in the most humble of means. And then he walked to the temple. And when he walked to the temple, he looked around. And he saw all the tables and all the money changers and all the cages and all the different fixings that were making the temple a den of thieves. It was late, so he did nothing that night except go out to Bethany. Everything the Lord did was according to the brilliant plan of the Father. 
He was the Messiah, the King of Israel, the Savior of the world. He was the Son of God and the Son of Man, and yet he did nothing except what the Father in heaven wanted him to, especially on this day which we call Palm Sunday. Because his riding into the city was not about being triumphant. It was about dying. His whole ministry was now coming to an end. But the incredible pain that he was going to face was just beginning. This day is such a remarkable day in my mind because of these. Rocks that are nothing, have no soul, have no life. God can make them sing. And they are perfect for describing what we are without God. We can do nothing. We can't come to faith. We can't help another person spiritually. We can't do anything but just sit there. And I don't know about you, but these rocks just sitting here are not that impressive. Last night, they said, you could stone someone with them. That's not impressive. That's just stupid. The Lord shows us how gracious he truly is by granting to us the gift. The gift of being his stones, his living stones. That he cherishes and puts together in perfect form and fashion so that we build something that will last forever. The body of Christ. Palm Sunday is a great day when we are reminded of the control and the purposefulness and the exact nature that our Father gave so that we would be saved. Even down to a donkey. And regardless of what the world says, we are much more important than donkeys by his grace. May we always understand the wonder of who he has made us and the life that he has granted us. Amen. By the way, could you hear was there anyone who could not hear me today? Are you sure? I can talk louder. Would you please rise?
Let us pray. Gracious Father, you give us the privilege of understanding the depth of your love for us, all that you have gone through in order to make us your own. You've given us these privileges of being able to call upon your name, to seek out your goodness and blessing upon others. This day we are privileged to bring before you our fellow members. And we first bring before you the teepees, Penny, Megan, and Mariah. For Penny, we ask, gracious Lord, your hand of blessing upon her, that each day you would touch her heart with a strength that you would provide to her a goodness, helping her to understand how precious she is before you, granting her your wisdom, especially in the continuing, continuing guidance she is granting to her daughter. And we ask that you would truly bless her, dear Lord, with a wisdom beyond her own and a strength beyond her own. For Megan and Mariah, keep them ever close to you. You understand the many difficulties they face. And so we ask that you would enlighten their minds and hearts with the power of your spirit, that you'd bring your healing upon them each day and grant them the comfort that comes from you alone. For the Tharps, for Eric and Olivia, Emma and Addison. For Eric and Olivia, we thank you, Lord, for life that you have given them together for the years that you have enabled them to love and support and bless each other's lives, for the many lives that you enable them to touch with their teaching, and the skills that you have given them to bring blessings into the many children's lives. But we ask that you would continue to bless them, strengthen their love for each other, and always keep them ever close to you. For Emma and Addison, keep them under your care. Walk near them each day, Continue to expand their minds and their hearts according to your will and lead them with the comfort and strength that comes from you. For the theme, for Gary and Marcia. For Gary and Marcia, we thank you, Lord, for the life that you have given them together, for the years that you have enabled them to love and support each other. May you provide them your health and strength, lift them up each day, and always keep them ever close to you. For Connie, we ask that you would be with her, dear Lord, continuing to bring your blessings upon her, your strength upon her, and that you would carry her through all that she is facing. So we place her into your hands and trust in what you alone can provide. For Jim, we ask that you would be with him, that you would help him to deal with his Parkinson, that through the therapy he is going to receive, return some strength to him, and grant him a clarity of mind as only you can. For Judy's family, we thank you, gracious Father, for Judy's faith, and for the promise that they know you have given to her. For them, we ask that your spirit would be upon them, that you would carry them through this time and truly enrich them with the goodness that comes from you alone. For Sharon, we ask that you would be with her, that you would bring healing to her mind, that you would grant to her patience, that you would truly provide a rest for her, and that very soon she will be able to return to her normal activities. For Sherry Sanders as well, dear Lord, we ask your blessing upon her, that you would ease the pain that she is enduring, and that you would grant your special presence upon her. So I place her into your hands and thank you for all that you will do. And as your people, dear Lord, we look to you now in the prayer that your son has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated.
Would you please rise? And would you join me in praying the closing cup? Heavenly Father, you grant us your spirit to open our eyes and enlighten our minds to serve you and fellow believers. Lead us by your spirit to enable us to witness of your love, live according to your will, bring your word of life to others, rejoice in the goodness you have showered upon us, and reflect your love in how we reach out to others. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one now, God and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant to you his eternal peace. Amen. <laughs>